when we were young. Our parents used to tell us things. But when we grew up, we realized that the reality is totally different. You know what I mean. Work in a big company and get a stable job. And later, you realized even the CEO could be fired. That being said, the same rule applies in penetration testing. I'm assuming that you want to be an ethical hacker and you want it to be your job as well. I mean, what can be better than making your hobby as a daily job, right? Let me show you what a penetration tester job will be in real life based on my experience in the field. Big companies always have web applications and software applications to be delivered into the production environment. It's not only one application. Sometimes it's over a thousand. I'm not exaggerating here. I've seen this number in front of my eyes. In fact, it's normal in enterprise-level companies. Now, let's see how companies manage the SDL. If you don't know what SDL is, it stands for Software Development Lifecycle. Before I start this diagram, I want you to know that all that you will see in this demo are based on my book of practical web penetration testing. If you want to know more about the subject, check it out. It will help you big time in your career as a penetration tester. I will give you the link in the description below. All right, let's go back to our slides. When a company has a new project idea, they start with the architecture phase. This is where the big picture is laid out. After this stage, the project will be approved and moved to the development phase. This is where the website or the software is developed using programming languages such as Java or C-sharp.net. Remember, I'm talking here about big companies. So, Java and C-sharp are enterprise-level programming languages. When the product is tested and stable, now it's time to deploy it, right? A final test will be executed as well. And finally, the project is deployed into the production environment. This is boring, right? Where is the penetration testing here? And why am I telling you this story? Bear with me. You will understand what I mean. Persistence is very important skill for an ethical hacker. Okay, now where do we fit in all this diagram? In the architecture phase, a lot of meetings will happen at the beginning. And you as a penetration tester will be involved as well. Now, another person who is the information security analyst will be present as well. The goal for you is to understand the application and create an architecture document called application threat modeling. On the other hand, the risk analyst will create a risk assessment document to evaluate the risk associated with the new project. Now, if you don't know what is an application threat modeling, you have two choices. Either check the OWASP or you can read my book for more details and practice. Most of the times, your document will be an input for the risk assessment document. So be prepared to work as a team with a risk analyst to get the job done successfully. 
So, your role will be a permanent employee as a penetration tester, and you will be dealing with white box testing. Next, the project is approved and it's now ready for development. In general, the source code, either Java or C Sharp, will be pushed to a build server. Then, from there, a SAST software will scan the source code once it's built. Veracode is the most popular one. This software is very expensive, but the enterprise has the money, so it's not a problem for them. Another competitor to Veracode is Checkmarks. I'm not here to evaluate any product. I'm just sharing with you the knowledge. After that, when the application is ready to be deployed, that's when you as a penetration tester will come and start testing. The application threat modeling that you did first will help you to remember what the project is all about. These projects sometimes take months between the architecture phase and the deployment phase. Next, you will use your programming skills to evaluate the source code manually. Then, you will use an enterprise vulnerability scanner to scan the production server where the application will be deployed. After that, you will execute the web intrusion tests, most probably with Burp Pro. Remember, you're working in a big company, so buying licenses is not an issue. Finally, you generate a report and give it to the risk analyst, so he or she will present it to the project and re-evaluate the risk assessment document that was written in the architecture phase. In general, critical and high vulnerabilities should not be allowed to be deployed into the production server but medium and low can be added to the backlog and they will be fixed in future deployments. At this stage, the application is in production. So what's next? Another pen tester from the operation security department will handle the application health check every year and they will execute black box tests on the infrastructure and the web application as well. It depends how critical the application is, but in general, it's once per year. What if you're not an employee of that company? Sometimes these big companies hire another third party to execute the tests. It can be either a freelance consultant or big consulting companies. You as a penetration tester can work for these consulting companies as well. And you will always be sent to clients for penetration testing tasks. And the most exciting part is red teaming. Folks, I hope that I helped you to visualize what to expect in a real-life scenario as a penetration tester.